All right. And I will hand it back to you. Uh, so the next thing on our agenda is uh, the first kind of big item, uh, the Data Hub Analytics Design Sprint that uh, Maggie uh, led for us. Um, Maggie, do you want to actually take over the screen share and drive from there? Yeah. Yeah, that'd All be right. fine. Sounds good. Uh, give me one second. So hello, everybody. I'm Maggie Hayes. I'm a senior PM of data services at Spot Hero based out of Chicago. Um, so earlier in April, I think it was April. Time is weird right now. Who knows? It was within the last month or so. <laughs> um, I teamed up with the uh, guys over at Acryl Data to uh, run what's called a design sprint. So I'll walk you guys through what, is that, what does that mean? What did we do? Uh, what was the point of it? And then we'll move into a live demo. So can y'all see my screen? Look good? All right. So um, if you've never heard of a design sprint, um, it's something that was created. It came out of uh, GV or Google Ventures. Um, and it's basically a, a framework to rapidly move through discovery, uh, ideation, solution, prototyping, and testing, solving hard problems with technology uh, in five days. Granted, we did it in three days. There are a bunch of truncated ways that you can do it, but the, the original one was in a five day, uh, a five day sprint. Um, and I'll walk you through this. If, if y'all are interested in learning more about this, there's a ton of information online. Um, this is the book. This is kind of like the main uh, source of record, I guess, of what a sprint framework looks like. You can find it on Amazon, all that. Um, also on YouTube, there's a channel called AJ and Smart where they have uh, they have videos that break down every single session. They call it Design Sprint 2.0. So it kind of gives you like a refresh of it there. Um, so ample, ample context or, or resources for y'all online if you want to run um, similar things in your own companies. So um, what I, the role that I played in this was really facilitator. So moving the team through a bunch of different steps of this process. So on the first day, we tackled understanding our problem, like identifying and understanding our problem at hand so that we could um, ultimately build a strong prototype around it. So we asserted that our problem was that the owners and admins of Data Hub do not understand how users are interacting with the tool. So that's a, a big problem, right? There are a lot of technical approaches you could take to solving that. Um, and so what, what we started doing was taking a step back and understanding how to contextualize that problem into the bigger picture of the Data Hub strategy. So we talked about how does this fit into the long-term uh, vision of Data Hub and we rallied around this, um, this vision that in 12 to 18 months, data platform owners will want to deploy Data Hub at the organization because it gives them superpowers. So right away, when we start talking about solving this problem, we want it in the, the context of Data Hub is going to provide an immense amount of uh, value, right? So how do, we, um, how do owners understand their user activity so that Data Hub can give them you know, data superpowers? Um, and then we talked about what, we identified what question or questions we would be asking at the end of this process to understand if, if it was a success. And we rallied around, are we providing data platform owners with actionable insight? So user usage analytics is not all like it doesn't, just because you have usage analytics doesn't mean it's meaningful. So we wanted to make sure that we would be able to ask concretely, do you now have actionable insights so that you can you know, move towards this like future uh, value of Data Hub in the long run? The next thing we did is we, we started to break down um, all of the, the potential pain points within developing or solving this problem within the current stack. Um, and, and we reframe this into what's called a how might we, and really it's just a way to kind of like <laughs> flip a problem on its head and turn it into an opportunity. So we talked about how might we make the analytics infrastructure easy to manage so it's not another service for operators to manage. Um, how might we give clear insights where there's poor data quality, uh, sorry, there's poor uh, data quality coverage, but heavily used assets. So that way we're, we're trying to solve this solution without adding too much burden on the, uh, the owners or operators of the platform. And then also giving insight into where you're seeing a lot of activity and there's actually opportunity to enrich that metadata to give folks more, uh, more power there. Then another thing we did was we talked to our experts within the Data Hub community and wanted to make sure that we had a well-rounded understanding of this problem set, how folks even thought about um, how products uh, analytics would fit into their management of Data Hub. 
And so, you know, sample questions in these uh, user interviews were, um, were some like the, the top questions you'd like to be able to answer around user activity and what decisions would that inform? So the idea is that everyone in this design sprint is included in every single stage of, of this process so that we have all of their perspectives, all of their um, kind of like joint knowledge of how to solve this problem. Um, again, on day, we're still on day one, <laughs> it was a busy day. Um, we then mapped out our kind of user experience within Data Hub so that we had a very concrete understanding of where this solution fit into that workflow. So um, we talked about how you, know, you would install Data Hub uh, as a POC, have some step of ingesting metadata, share it with your users, gather feedback, maybe do some iteration cycles here. From there, you then move into feature development and improving metadata to then move it back into this, this flow. And we really targeted this idea of, we are assuming that the POC exists, there is metadata, there are active users, we are gathering feedback and making decisions about user activity to inform future development, areas to improve metadata and ways to drive adoption. So again, this really just helps us have a very laser, like a, near, a laser focus of where this problem fits into uh, the vision of Data Hub, the user life cycle, et cetera. Then we move into sketching solutions. You can see that these came in a variety of different ways. Some folks are writing up uh, pencil paper. Some folks are uh, whiteboarding, mocking things up with the UI. The idea is that we just start visualizing what does this solution look like? Then day two, decide on a solution. We're again, we're, we're deciding on a solution to tackle this one big problem. Um, once we had all of the solutions up here, we did a lot of, you can, uh, since we we're doing this remotely, there's a bunch of like little emojis or uh, thumbs up to kind of show areas where we think they're good ideas. And it's really just rallying around, how are we actually gonna solve this? Um, we then walk through our user test flow to get very concrete about what are the steps that folks are gonna take in order to see if this actually solves their problem. Um, and I'm, I'm zooming through this very quickly because I want us to get to the demo, but we'll have the deck post if you guys can look through this in more detail. But basically this user test flow then moves us into having our storyboard so that everyone who's contributing to this project knows what exact steps are gonna be taken, how they fit into a user test flow and how we can um, kind of asynchronously begin building together. So this is day two. By the time we moved into day three, we started uh, moving towards our prototype. Um, and I think here, yeah, Dexter, you want to take, take things over? From here. Yeah. Cool. So you want to share your screen? Um, uh, uh, let's continue with the slides and then I'll okay, share cool. once we start the demo. Um, so while we started building a prototype, we wanted to have some guiding principles um, on uh, as we make decisions on our architecture. So the first thing is to standardize the way uh, usage events are produced on the React app. So please check out the event schemas there. Um, so we standardize the page view events, uh, search events, browse events, and, and so on and so forth, where uh, we put enough information for us to understand where these usage events are coming from and what these user events like it actually mean. Um, second was to utilize existing components of Data Hub. Uh, as Maggie mentioned before, we don't want to make uh, operators' lives even harder by adding even more components to deploy. So we wanted to use whatever uh, components we've already deployed um, to actually support a initial uh, prototype of the analytics platform, uh, analytics product. Um, the third was while we wanted to have this default way of using uh, existing components, we wanted everyone to be able to plug their own architecture for consuming these usage events. Um, so usage events are actually posted to a Kafka stream. So anybody can just uh, plug in any consumer um, of choice uh, for data collection and analytics. Um, operators can also wire third-party analytics tools like Google Analytics and Mixpanel to the React app. So please check out this doc for more details on how to do that. Um, unfortunately for now, you have to fork the repo, but we are going to work on making that um, through config. All right, so moving on, uh, let's go on to the end-to-end the -end flow. So. You can see each component here are existing components in our data hub graph. Um, so our React app, so the, we have the user mark here. As the user interacts with the React app, it, caught, it sends over the events through the track endpoint in the front end. So the front end collects these events and posts it to a Kafka topic. So we created a new topic called data hub usage event v1. 
Um, and that is where all the events go through. Um, so we added a consumer in the MAE consumer, uh, which already had a connection to Elasticsearch, which is why we chose this one. Um, it will listen to Data Hub Usage Event V1 and process these events that come through. So note that these events are not hydrated. So what we do, like for example, a user uh, earn comes in, we want to know the details about this user. Uh, to do that, we go back to GMS. So we call the remote uh, DAO, local DAO to get the details about the entities. So we hydrate the entity features and we package it into a single document, which we send over to the data hub usage event data stream um, on Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch connects um, all these uh, usage events and front end. So we created a new analytics controller, which uh, sends over filter and aggregate queries to the Elasticsearch data hub usage event data stream, where it, can, it says uh, it tries to count and do a bunch of time series analytics and things like that to build some uh, bare bone uh, charts and tables that power our analytics service. And it, that is fed back into our React app at the end. So let's go on to the demo. Um, so let me take over the share screen here. Dexter, just one thing, uh, maybe just take a minute or two at max for the demo. I'm just looking at the timing. Oh, okay. Uh, one sec. You guys see the, yeah. the data? All right, so what I did here was I modified MA consumer job a little bit so that it prints out the MA, uh, the usage event that is coming in. So uh, we are in the usual data hub app. Um, so as we click, you can see that the events are coming in. So we have a page view event. Um, you can see browse events, browse result, click events, as well as, so let's try searching. You can see the search event that came in. So it says it queried um, with a query sample, as well as search view events that talk about how many results was in the search page. And as we click on it, each of these actions that you take um, inside the entity page, inside the search page, inside the browse page will uh, translate to a certain uh, usage event that comes in. So now these usage events are all sent over. You can see that the Elastic Search Connector is sending the bulk request to our data stream there. So once we go to the analytics beta, what we do is each of these components um, are configurable inside the code in the data hub front end. Um, we have highlight cards, we have time series charts, um, and then we have tables as well as stack bar charts. Um, so we created these main four different um, visual cards that we want to support. Um, and then we implemented all of them. So you can see here, this is searches last week um, and then top search queries that come in. Um, you can see sample, there was top search, um, five searches, as well as section views across different um, entity pages. So we have lineage, we have ownership, we have schema and so on. Uh, also actions by entity type. You can see we have update tags here. I updated a few yesterday. Um, to just show you guys. And then we have top view data sets. Of course, we will be continuing to add more charts here. So it'd be great if we could get feedback here. So I wanted to go over the charts that we see for our own demo.datahub page. So you can see we have amazing, we have 421 weekly active users, crazy. Um, thanks for using the demo. Um, we can see the searches that are happening um, as well as the various search queries. So we can, we can gather a lot of signals but what users are doing on this platform by just looking at these few charts. Awesome, that's it for the demo. Yeah, and one thing I'll add here, um, Dexter, could you actually just uh, display open your, or hide the um, terminal in there? Just so we can see like a full, uh, a full view of the dashboard, perfect, thank you. So what, what we were trying to do is like find, find ways to contextualize not only activity, but also where is their opportunity um, to really like uh, leverage the power of, of Data Hub, right? So if we're thinking about um, the, the number of data sets, so we have 92 data sets and half of them have owners assigned. That's great. So what that means is that we're halfway towards having 
fully documented data sets within Data Hub, right? So it's it's not even just the what are people looking at, but what are people looking at that's specific to the value that Data Hub is driving. Um, the other part, and so speaking from my perspective as a product manager managing this type of tool, I want to understand how do I decide where to invest my team's energy? Are people only looking at data sets? Are they looking at pipelines now? And maybe our pipelines aren't well documented or um, in the actions that they're taking, are they are they adding tags? Are they manage, changing owners? Are they looking at ownership detail, lineage, et cetera? That way I can start to narrow down um, you know, where to have my team and my stakeholders start to in, in, uh, invest in having more robust and, and uh, more meaningful metadata within there. The other thing that we were thinking about is um, you know, looking at the TERP, uh, TERP is not a word, excuse me, the top search queries to understand like, what are people even looking for in here? Is it specific terms? Um, and I think one, one thing we were talking about is, um, you know, uh, there, as, as the set of data platforms expands, do we have people coming in and searching for something like Salesforce data or Braze data, like some of these other tools that maybe aren't in there. And that can be a leading indicator of other ingestion mechanisms uh, or pipelines that we need to pull in. So I think we can also start to leverage this idea of um, finding the gap of what people are searching for and trying to do, but we're not actually meeting that demand. Um, and like, like Dexter said, uh, if, if you have ideas or questions about how to make this more impactful or meaningful, I uh, will route you all over to the ACWEL team, um, but we're definitely excited to see where this where this heads. Cool, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Maggie and Dexter. Yeah, it was a great experience. And um, I was talking to Young and, uh, you know, uh, Nick and Ben over on the LinkedIn side as well. and. They've actually built a very complex and very expensive um, analytics uh, capability on the product stream as well. So at a future date, we can uh, get into that as well. That includes sessions and a lot of uh, deeper analytics. So it's, it's pretty cool what people are doing with it.